Well, hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV. Actually, it's another season. We took a little break. We're back. Um, we are back, and we are brought to you by Kelby One, who bring you... There you have it. Photoshop User Magazine. And what Pete is holding right now is the newest Hot Tips issue. It's our annual issue. We have contributors... Contributors? Contributors. Contributors that uh, contribute um, random tips. We've got, I've got some in there, Pete's got some, we've got the rest of the Photoshop guys, including Scott, Matt, and RC, as well as uh, other Photoshop world instructors like uh, Glenn Dewis, and uh, Adobe's own Brian Hughes has got some tips in there too. So there's a lot of really good information in that episode. Be sure to check that out. Hi everyone, welcome back. I am Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys, and I'm joined again by my co-host, Mr. Pete Collins. There he is. Right there. So uh, it's been a little bit. We actually have, uh, we've been around, uh, bouncing around we, the place. We've been we, around. You're right. right. We've been around. We've, we've been, just been hanging just around. We've been hanging around. We, uh, in the means, and since uh, our last episode, we of course have had uh, Photoshop World in Las Vegas. It was a fantastic show. We had a great time. It really had a great turnout. So we really want to thank everybody. And we just want to let you know that we had a great time. I hope you had as much fun as we did. And we can't wait to see you next year in Las Vegas, once again, I believe it's August. August, right? yes. August this year. So be sure to check out photoshopworld.com and see what's gonna be coming up as that event comes up. Now, we're gonna dive right into it, and Pete is gonna kick things off. Pete, uh, I notice you have a workshop image there. Yeah, well, I, uh, I, it has nothing to do with uh, what I'm gonna teach. You just have to sometimes throw up little eye candy. Oh, you know, okay. I did a workshop uh, in He's Miami, a, okay. a kids photography workshop that I was helping teach. But that's not the tip. I'm going to give you a quick tip. And this is a tip that I keep sharing and people keep missing, but it can really save your bacon. And so I want to repeat it again save to follow the camera. Bacon. So I want to save your I like, bacon. I like bacon. Bacon is good. <laughs> what you want to do is go over to Preferences, come down here to Performance. And in this, you can first of all set how much you want to allocate your, your memory to Photoshop. Obviously, it's going to take a lot if uh, you're in there doing a lot of stuff. Uh, but that's not the real tip. The real tip is this history states. A and what it is is when you look at this, normally the default setting is 20 history states or 20 steps or undos backwards. Mm -hmm. And if you're like me, you mess up on the 21st or 22nd it was always that, that last one. Yeah, you exactly. never get back. You need it to be more than 20. And so what you can do is you can plug in here up to 999, yay, 1,000 history states if you want. But I'm going to leave it at 50 is where I kind of put it as my default setting because I find that's a good uh, compromise between not hogging up too much memory on your computer but having enough backup states that mm -hmm. uh, you can often recover whatever you need to because 50 is kind of a good number. Now I will tell you that if you're an artist like me, every brush stroke that you put down counts as one history state. So you can see how if you're doing quick sketches or whatever, you can get to 50 real quick. So that might be a, a thought that you have. You may want to bump it up even higher. If you find it's clogging up your computer, lower it back mm -hmm. down. But I like 50 as a great place to, to hang out at and it's saved me so many times where 20 wouldn't have done it. So there's my quick tip for today. Go into Preferences, down to Performance, change your history state to the number you want. I prefer 50. There you go. I agree. It's, and, and it's great that you can really put in that many, but I always tell people to try and keep it no more than 50 because, it, I mean, it, like you're saying, it, it does start to slow things What down. happens in the background is Photoshop saves each version, each change you make. Photoshop stores that version of that file in the background somewhere, so it can fill up your system pretty fast. Yep. So just be aware of that. All right. Um, something I forgot to mention before Pete started is we've got a special guest on the show today. Um, uh, actually, not live on the show, but... We've got some, something special. Had some folks from Adobe at our offices a few, week, few weeks ago. Brian Hughes and Steven Nielsen, both product managers for Photoshop, were here. And we got them on the show to share a few of the newest um, features that have been added to Photoshop CC in the past uh, couple months. So, Or well, really even stuff that's been there for a while, mm. but we, a yeah, lot they, of people don't realize. Yeah, they tend to highlight, they actually highlighted a few things that have been there, and it's maybe you didn't really you know, kind of slipped through the cracks, you didn't really notice it, so they're going to bring those uh, forward so you can see them once again. Well, that's going to come up after the break, and I also have something quick I'm going to share with you. So let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back with all that cool stuff. So.
Okay, we're back. And now, guys, if you haven't checked out KelbyOne.com, our, our site, it's a place that you can go. You can find all kinds of great training on Photoshop, photography. We've got community places that you can go over. I do Photoshop challenges, image of the week. But uh, whatever you want to learn in photography or Photoshop, hopefully, more than likely, we have the class for you here. So make sure you go over there and check it out. That is KelbyOne.com. We've got some classes coming up mm -hmm. every week. We have new classes new, that pop up. You new got classes some coming up. I actually got a brand series. new one that's going to come up very soon. I've got my motion graphics in Photoshop. And not to mention, there's also information regarding our live events, uh, like Photoshop World, as well as the seminar tour. Uh, which I've got New Orleans coming up on October 3rd, so be sure to check that out as well. So, and I just want to plug real quick, on, on Kelby One pretty soon, I've got a new series coming up. It's called the Photoshop Master Effects series, where they're more like project-based classes where we're going to be doing more involved projects. Um, really, really cool stuff. I'm really excited about it, so be on the lookout for that as well. Yeah, so if we jump over real quick to the Photoshop side of things here, we've got motion graphics in Photoshop oh, from it is Corey. It is, yeah. We've got Wacom tablets for photographers, and then my cloning and healing crash course are just a couple of them that you can jump in and get up and running with Photoshop or going even more in depth right there on Kelby One. Spectacular. All right. Now is the time for Adobe's In the Spotlight. Uh, as I said earlier, we had um, a couple of product managers from Adobe here in the studio, and they got them here on the set to do uh, share a few tips on some of the newer features and perhaps features that you may that have always been there you may not have known about. So here is Steven Nielsen with Adobe. Check this out. Well, hi everyone, Corey Barker here, and I'm joined by a very special guest today. I have here Mr. Steven Nielsen, who is the senior product manager for Adobe Photoshop. That's right, it is the big guy himself. Now, one of the reasons we've got Stephen here, and thank you for joining us, by the way. Thank you. Happy to have you here. And uh, one of the great things about Adobe is that they really listen to you, the user, everyone. And they really want to make the, pro the product the best possible thing it can be for you, the user. And they really listen to this stuff. So wanted to have Stephen come on and really kind of talk to us about some things that people might be having issues with or things that they are dealing with based on user feedback. And we got a couple of things he's going to discuss with us. And today, I want to have him talk to us about native text for the web. Web text is really an issue with a lot of people. It's really getting clear, concise text and looking, making it look really good on the web. And you've got a solution for that. Um, yeah, so when you're designing a website in Photoshop, uh, we've heard a lot of feedback from customers that mm -hmm. the text as rendered in Photoshop with the same settings didn't didn't look the same as in the browser. Mm -hmm. And this is really important for a web designer to sure. make sure mm -hmm. that things look exactly like they're going to look on the web page. Absolutely. And the the reason that the, they didn't really look the the they didn't look the same is because there's different rendering engines. So mm -hmm. the, the browser has a rendering engine that's built on the operating right. system. Yeah. And then Photoshop has its own rendering engine that works across both Mac and Windows. Mm -hmm. So when you're using strong rendering in Photoshop uh, on a Mac, mm -hmm. it's going to look exactly the same as strong text rendering on a Windows machine. Okay. And, that's, and that's a great thing sure. for, uh, for if you're working with print. Mm -hmm. But if you're working on the web, you actually want this to be different depending on the platform that you're sure. on. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is if I take this, t this type layer here, you can switch the anti-aliasing mode from strong to Mac LCD. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to do is that's going to tell Photoshop, don't use Adobe's text rendering. Go use Mac OS text rendering to render this text. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the same text rendering that Chrome and Safari and Firefox use on the Mac. Mm -hmm. So if I switch that, you might not be able to see on the video, but it ever so slightly changes a little bit more uh, bold. Um, so the rendering has just changed a little bit. I didn't change the, the point size or, or the font. Mm -hmm. I just changed the anti-aliasing. But this is going to match now what you see in Safari or Chrome. So you're not going to run into any conflict with any browsers or anything like that? Exactly. It's, it's going to look just like. like you've designed it in Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the thing that you have to be careful with, with this mode is that this is Mac LCD. Mm -hmm. If you save this file and send it to somebody on a Windows machine, it's going to show up as Windows LCD because mm -hmm. it's using the native text rendering of the platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously a Windows machine doesn't have the Mac rendering mm -hmm. system on right. it. So it's going to actually change how well, this looks very it, slightly. It's on different right. But that's actually a good thing again for a web designer mm -hmm. because they might they want to see how it looks on uh, a Safari mm -hmm. versus Internet Explorer. So right, you can right. put uh, you can move the file to the two different machines and mm -hmm. see uh, what it looks like in both browsers. And that's a great thing. I mean, I'm constantly getting people asking me, 
I'm like, my text isn't looking right. I'm coming out of Photoshop. It's not looking the right way. And I'm often telling them, check out the anti-aliasing and things like that. But I, don't, I think a lot of people, and with, with so, a great deal of things in Photoshop, they don't know what's there. It's like, yeah. it's there. Yeah. And that, it's, like, it's like, what do you mean? That functionality is there. It's been there for some time. It's like, I don't know where it is. And that's a great thing is people knowing, and it's just being able to specifically pinpoint where they're going to put that feature, you know, where right. they want it to uh, appear correctly. So yeah, yeah, the bottom line is if you're doing anything for a screen, mm -hmm. whether that's web design, if you're doing like a mobile app design, anything that's going to go to a screen, always use the native text rendering. and you're going to get better results. That's great. All right. So again, as I said, uh, they always are looking at feedback. You guys take the feedback very, very seriously. You very really seriously. Scrutinize yeah. what you get, and you really take it seriously. And they absolutely do that. And there is a source, a place you can go to give them that feedback. I mean, and where is that at? Yeah. Uh, Feedback.photoshop.com. Yep. It's a site that we created exactly to get feedback directly from our customers. Mm -hmm. You can go there to request your own uh, feedback uh, or your your own feature request, and you can vote on other people's requests and comment on them. We mm -hmm. have kind of a running discussion on some of the most so essentially popular. Essentially like creating like a community. Exactly, of, of exactly. That yeah. really kind of you know, agree on different things. So, and again, they absolutely listen. You're not just throwing out your comments or questions into a vacuum. I mean, they are taking these things very seriously and they act on them very quickly as well. It's not something that you, know, you look for yeah. years down the road. It's just like, what can we tackle now? And they'll take care of it now, so. So, and even more so, I just want to throw out, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you my direct email address if you'd like. Uh oh, there he goes. Um, and, you know, if, if you have something special that you'd really like for us to work on, feel free to email me directly. Also, put it on feedback.photoshop.com, feedback though, because that's going to give an opportunity for other people in the community to see what you've requested to vote on it and maybe even add on to that request. Which is, that is great because it, a lot of people tend to have the same issue. Yeah, uh, they see that more people have that issue, and of course, the more people have an issue, the more uh, more seriously you guys take it, or the quickly you act on it. So, yeah. so be sure to check that out. Feedback.photoshop.com. Stephen, thanks for stopping by. I hope you got yeah. some more stuff you might be able to share with us. So, plenty. All right, yeah. good deal. So we're gonna have him uh, show us a few more things. But once again, thank you uh, for taking your time out and joining us here on Photoshop TV. Back to you guys. All right, well, there you go. Thank you so much, Stephen Nielsen, for helping us out. See some new things on there. Mm -hmm. Speaking of new things, what do you have for us today, Corey? Funny enough, I don't have a new thing. I actually have an old thing. What um, old thing do you have for us today, Corey? I, um, at, at Photoshop World, actually, it was, I was doing a lot of compositing stuff where I was extracting elements and, and subjects, bringing them onto new backgrounds. And the method I use most often is I'll go and use, like, uh, the quick selection tool and then do refine edge and do all that. And it does a fantastic job. But I had mentioned that I, before that technology came along, I was a really big fan of using channels to extract elements. So I'm going to take an element here really quick. We're going to go ahead and just extract it the old-fashioned way. So I'm going to jump over to the channels palette, which is grouped with the layers panel. So we're just going to go ahead and grab the tab and bring it out here. Now, what you want to do is look at the individual channels that make up this image. And we're going to look at red, green, and blue. We're looking for the one that has the most contrast to the background. So in this case, obviously, it looks like it's going to be the blue channel. So we're just going to make a duplicate. We're not going to work directly in the original blue channel. We'll obviously alter the image. So we're making a duplicate of the blue copy or the blue channel. And then I'm going to do a quick levels adjustment. So just press Command L, and we're going to grab the white eyedropper. And right close to the edge of the subject here on the outside, I'm just going to click once. And that's going to kind of force the background to white. Now we still have some edge detail around the subject. So we're going to go and get the brush tool. Set the default colors with black as the foreground color. Now here is the key to this technique, is when the brush is selected, we've got a, a regular soft edge brush here. But the key is up here in the options bar to change the blend mode of the brush to overlay. Now what that's going to allow you to do is paint on the subject and force the darker areas to black while it keeps the rest of the image or the rest of the background pure white. Because it is pure white, it's not going to be affected. So we're just going to paint in the area. And we're kind of thinking reverse here, because obviously we want the subject to be pure white and the background black, but we're doing it backwards here for the moment. So I'm just going to paint in on the hair element here. So all I'm trying to do is just worry about getting the edge forced to solid black. And that blend mode is helping that a great deal. So now once I've got that, I'm going to make a kind of just a general selection around the subject here inside. I'm just keeping the selection inside this area here. Because instead of painting all that in there, I'm just going to make the selection and then just do a fill with black there. And then we'll just go and get that brush and just fine tune any areas. Now this is 
a very effective method even still today because you're able to get a little bit more accurate than if you did the other methods. I'm not saying the other methods are useless. They're certainly very helpful and very time saving. But when you really want to get detail like this, this method will work. And the beauty of this, of course, is you have a stored alpha channel when you are done of your subject. So I'm going to just press Command I, and that's going to invert the mask. And now we can see the background isn't, wasn't as pure white as we might have thought it was because of the gray areas there. So I'm just going to use that brush again, keeping it, oh, no, let's keep the blend mode. Back in overlay. Come on, stay in overlay mode. There we go. So notice it's just keeping right close to the edge there. We're just going to force these little small areas to white. And there we have a nice clean mask. Now I could probably spend a little bit more time, you know, fine tuning this and everything. But once you have that available and ready, go back to your um, layers and then you'll just simply go to the select menu, go to load selection, blue copy. There it is. And I'll just copy that to a selected layer. Now it's nicely extracted not once using the Refine Edge in there. Now, I probably would, these days, if I was going to go this route, probably would add Refine Edge to the end of this uh, technique just to get a little bit cleaner on that. But the beauty of this, of course, as I mentioned, is I'm getting that detail in the hair that just uh, Refine Edge just wouldn't be able to get or get as cleanly um, as, uh, as you would before. So there is your cool channels method. Still relevant to this day. Again, I used it years ago, and now it's still relevant today. So. Yeah, it's, mm. uh, it's great to know this because there's sometimes that Photoshop can do so many different things mm. and so many different processes. Sometimes one process will work great on one image and another one will work better on another. And mm -hmm. knowing that selection tool is really going to help your uh, compositing. Absolutely. What's up? All right. Speaking of helpful, helpful, we have Peach the... Pits being helpful. What are they doing, Corey? I don't know. What are they doing? <laughs> PeachBit, of course, has another e-deal uh, for you viewers. Kelby One viewers can save 40% on an e-book. The book is The Passionate Photographer by Steve Simon. There it is right there. You just go to peachpit.com slash Kelby One and enter the promo code Kelby One to save big money. Big 40%. It's ten, actually, it's actually ten been... Ten steps uh, towards becoming great. Ten I think I only really need about two or three, because yeah. I'm pretty close. By the time we get to four or five, you're... Yeah, close, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty great, I'm, I'm just going to say. In addition to that, we have, of course, our usual giveaways here. Pete, what are the prizes today? Well, Corey, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> for this round, we're going for the way of the photographer, way of the digital photographer. i got to hold it towards the camera, let him focus in on it. We are walking the Photoshop post-production path to more creative photography. And this is by Harold Davis, and along with that, Adobe InDesign CC Learn by Video. Two products that are going to help you get on your way to doing a lot more photography, a lot more design. It's a great package. And how do they win, Corey? You win these fabulous prizes by simply going to kelbyone.com slash webcast slash contest. Go into the menu, select the show, enter your name, email, and... A comment, question, whatever. Simply entering your name is enough to put yourself in for the winning, but send us a comment. Send us something you'd like to see a joke. or a joke. We, joke. We've been getting some good jokes, by all means. We keep forgetting to put those together. We do need to put air. together a right. compile list. We need to, put, we need to have like the, uh, the joke mailbag officially on Photoshop user. So be sure and check that out. And uh, I believe that wraps it up for this that week. Wraps it we, for are, this week. we are off and running with another season. We call them seasons. I don't know. We're just blocks of, of shows. Whatever these are. But I uh, hope you guys join us next week. We've got more uh, stuff from Adobe as well as the usual fun here on Photoshop User. So thank you, Pete. And thank you, Corey. I am, of course, Corey. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>